with your sharp knife, I find the, flight, the, the flattest spot right there. And what I want to do, maybe quarter inch thick, is just make a little slice. Doesn't have to be a quarter inch thick. This is really, this is up to you. You can make it really thick. You can make it super paper thin. Uh, but what you're trying to do is create an opening. And you flip it over. See, it's nice and flat, just like that. So what we're going to do is just roll out the rest of the meat. Little slices, you can't see that, but. Uh, I can see it from here. Yes. Okay. So Aiden, the important part here is just slicing the tenderloin to an even consistency. Is that correct? Uh, yes. In order to have a proper t um, temperature? Exactly. Go even cooking throughout. Even That's cooking. what we want. And this is an important step. It doesn't matter if you use cornmeal or, or a different kind of bread. Ours is a gluten-free bread, and it tastes a lot better than most breads, actually, because of, of the process that they have to do with this. Um, this absorbs all the juices of the meat. So Can you tell us how... So it's not actually toasted, they're just... It's not crumbs. actually toasted. This is breadcrumbs. It's gluten-free breadcrumbs. So how did you get it to that consistency? I put it in a food processor and I chopped it. Of course, you can buy breadcrumbs. <laughs> so you just want a small... Just a small amount. I'm not using all of this, you can see. But what I want to do is cover it so when it cooks and the juices seep out of the meat, they absorb into the stuffing. They're not going to absorb into our vegetables that we just sauteed. In fact, this might even leach out a little bit more liquid into the bread crops. So we noticed that you used coconut oil. Um, coconut oil is just used for flavor, correct? We could actually substitute that with olive oil if that's what we had at home? Absolutely. We have a lot of fresh vegetables that are high in antioxidants and mushrooms. You said give it a lot of flavor as well, but they're part of the vitamin B Yes, group. The, the mushrooms give it flavor and texture and a lot of antioxidants. But so do the power greens. It doesn't always have to be spinach. You could use arugula. You could actually, there's a power green mix at your local grocery store. I mean, I don't even have to name it. Any grocery store or even a spring mix. It, uh, just something green leafy vegetable. Could uh, somebody use kale if, instead? Kale. Kale is good. Kale is popular. And we know that those dark leafy greens are have more nutrients and are better for us as right. well. Might as well just call it that. The dark leafy green. That's all we need. This one is spinach. Okay, so I got a lot of stuffing. Stuffing's awesome. A little bit more black pepper. A lot a bit more herbs. I'm make an herb crust almost. So flavoring and seasoning inside and out. Inside and out. But you notice we didn't use salt. Right. We right. didn't need to. There's so much variety. You, you, you could even almost just say variety is color. When you see that much color in anything, you know it's got flavor. You don't need salt. What if we don't have butcher's twine at home? What could we use in its place? Well, kite string is the same. Kite string? Okay. Yes. And you could actually, you can get butcher's twine at your grocery store for 97 cents. It's probably in the baking aisle. It's definitely by all the little utensils aisle. So, easy to get. Something that's not going to melt, don't use fishing line. You won't even find it. You're going to feed someone plastic. It's not a good idea. So I make a loop, okay? Real simple. Put it over the meat. My first tie, I'm gonna do more than one over, under, over, under. Almost like you're tying a fishing line, actually. Because now, that's not gonna come undone. I got my anchor. Now this is the way I do it. There's many ways to do it. There's only one principle that matters because there's more than one right way to do things in cooking. That's one of the reasons I love cooking, actually. Uh, the meat has to not fall apart. Tie it however you want. Do a bunch of strings just like that, and don't even keep them connected. You could do small strings, as long as the meat stays together. That's the only principle that matters here. But this is what works for me. I take the string, I make a loop. See that? 
under the meat. And I tighten it. Okay? And I repeat. Once again, over the hand. The key is that it catches. If you do it the other way, it doesn't catch. It's not a loop. Okay. It's a string. So underneath. Underneath. Make the loop. Okay, now we have the other side and the edges. Two strings on the edges. So we take our string, go over and under. Okay? Over and under. So you really want to make sure you seal, seal in all that goodness. Yes. Otherwise, you basically just made a skirt steak out of a really good piece of meat. Over, under, over, under. Take my two pieces. Same way I started. One, two, three. Locked. But, finish it. One, two, three. Locked.